I think I stopped them. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how to push all these buttons at the same time. Oh, goodness. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. I'm trying to figure out how to have that music kind of fade out instead of just, boop, it stopped. <laughs> ah, one day we'll get there. One day we'll get there. We will, we will, we will. How is everyone this beautiful Monday? Yes, I pulled Bougie a little closer. Oh, no, I'm not I'm not giving you my hand. I don't want you on my shoulder yet. Uh, you know, to kind of get the, the backdrop of the white wall. So because everybody on Friday was like, we can't see Bougie because of your curtain. Bad curtain color choice. I mean, I love the color and it's my bedroom and all, but I think I picked it because I like you. Yeah. Oh, that that deserves a stachio. That was a good. Yeah, there you go. Good bird. Yes, there you go. All right. <laughs> yes, I have the pistachios on my desk this time. So I, 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 we are going to discuss a topic today that could tend to go in a bad direction for being spirited in the chat. So I'm going to have my moderators on high alert uh, today because it's it's a little political but we are not we are not going to talk about it from the stance of politics let me make that clear we don't talk politics here because it's not what my channel's about so if you want to you don't want to know what my political stances are you got to just go watch my facebook and my TikTok. <laughs> we don't bring that we don't bring that here um yeah, so there is some crazy, cra there has been some crazy, crazy stuff happening. And can you guys hear me? Wait a minute. I cut. Stand by. I just realized I didn't do something. Stand by. Uh, okay. Is that? Okay, hold on. Here we go. And I have a bird flying across the room. My goodness. Okay. What are you doing down there? You're looking for more stash. You know, I'm this this is my show. This is not the bougie show. That's right. You just you get back over there. Okay. Okay. Can you guys hear me a little better now? I had to I had to shuffle some stuff around. You can hear me. Oh yay, good, 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 good. Okay. So back to what I was saying. So there's crazy stuff happening in the world, and yes, there's a lot of emotion and different views and opinions about how things should be done, how things are being done, but that is not what we're here to discuss today. So please, please, please refrain from putting anything in the chat that can just go off kilter. Okay. Just I'm, I'm requesting that ahead of time as we go into talking about how all of this affects your e-commerce business. That's what we want to talk about. And also what is happening with eBay? What in the world is happening with eBay? Um, if you are in any of the, the many, many, many eBay groups that exist over on Facebook, you will have heard numerous sellers saying, uh, sales have slowed to a halt. I've had no sales in X amount of days. I'm not selling anything. I'm not sure I can do this anymore. And if you are one of those sellers who have been saying this, then uh, today's show is really for you. Okay, because my name, why is it? Why is my name not on the screen? That's what I want to know. That's very strange. That's okay. It's behind me. I just realized that is that normally I have a little thing right here that uh, has my name, but I don't today. But anyway, 
that's my name. Actually, my name is Danny, but <laughs> so, so I am the niche lady. And the reason for that is what I teach them. And there are different methods of selling out there. This is my method that has worked very, very well for me for the past going on 24 years is you need to develop your niche in this gigantic e-commerce e world. Uh, because as you know, there are more and more and more resellers coming on the scene and selling stuff. And YouTubers that have a niche are talking about different brands and different bolos and different this and different that. But if you don't have your niche customer who is attracted to your business, you're not going to see the success of somebody who's built up their following. And so I see a lot of stuff too saying, well, do I have to have a YouTube channel to be successful on eBay or any other? You can always interchange eBay for whatever site it is you're talking about being on. eBay's just been like my go-to for, you know, 24 years. So I say eBay, um, but wherever that is, you have to think, about who comes over to your your store and and whether or not you have an eBay store, you have a virtual store. All those items in your thing <laughs> in your account are your store whether you have an official subscription to a store or not. So you must think about who am I attracting? Who do I want to come buy from me? What types of things do they buy? So that's why I'm the niche lady, because that is what I have been teaching for years is if you want to be really secure in this online selling world, you have to stop being an online yard sale and start being an online business. That used to be my tagline uh, because there are a lot of yard sale sellers out there. And if you model yourself after a yard sale seller, you're going to get yard sale prices. Will you sell a lot of stuff? Yeah, you absolutely can. There are different methods of selling. Uh, I tend to like higher margins, less products. Uh, it's just, you know, it takes just as much time to list a $5 item as it does a $500 item. So that's kind of like, that's my thing. I also don't want to deal in stuff that just doesn't excite me. And you'll hear it over and over in my videos. Yeah, that doesn't really excite me. Yeah, that doesn't really call me. Like that's how I have run my business. Because I know if I get things that excite me, then I'm more likely to, number one, put that excitement through my listing and actually get it listed. So that is that is why I have that method that works really well for me. Because another thing I know, a lot of you out there, you like the shopping part, you like the finding part, you don't so much like the listing part. And so you get what we call in the industry is a death pile, or I like to call it a profit pile because it's literally your profits sitting there in a pile waiting to be listed. So we like to call it a profit pile around here because that might make you more motivated to get that stuff listed and sold because selling the stuff is where you make your money. Like we all know that, right? But yet we kind of don't want to do the piece that actually makes us the money. That's, ooh, I know. Okay. And I know there are going to be some of you, maybe not in the chat, but when this is over, and uh, you're watching this on the replay and you're going to leave me the comments. But Danny, why are there only 20 items in your eBay store if you're saying this? That is because uh, right now I am doing all that I can with selling in my live sales on Fridays and the emails that come in. Every time I release a video, I sell five to 10 of those items that I purchased straight through email. So my eBay is kind of taken a back seat because I didn't have enough hours in the day. And I didn't have enough help 
to add more listings. Well, that's all going to change because I have hired a new person uh, and we are going to ramp up the eBay and, and get that rocking and rolling again, because I don't like all my eggs in one basket either. I don't like everything dependent on YouTube. I like my income coming from different places. So, so yes, but I've also been doing eBay both as a hobby at times and as a business at times, at one point, I was selling $30,000 a month on eBay. And I know how to make that happen again. But I have spent a lot of time over the last several years teaching you guys how to do that, which also takes time. So it's kind of just finding that balance, finding that balance. But yes, um, you are going to see my eBay store filling up very soon. And cross-posting. To other sites and managing that and i'm going to be sharing and showing you how i do all of that in the course of the next several monday shows that's that's for those of you who are the resellers that watch my channel monday is the place to be right here because that's what i talk about it's i'm talking about now the you know the str strategic end of reselling versus just watching me go shop for it and yeah i do you know i talk to you guys during the videos but but this is where I can really concentrate on helping you guys in your business. So there we go. You just want another pistachio. I know you're just like over there trying to say something cute. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So, all right. Oh, yeah. I'm totally doing a video this week that's going to be, I think it's going to be titled something about hoarding. Uh, I uh, something to do with, with proving that I am not a hoarder because I get lots of comments calling me a hoarder. So I'm going to do a little house tour and show you guys I'm not a hoarder. I'm going to show you like the setup that we have here for getting the eBay stuff done and all that. So that's coming soon to a video near you. <laughs> Definitely. I'm not a hoarder. I, I have. I have some hoarder tendencies when it comes to certain things, but no, I am not a hoarder. I like a nice, clean, clear house. And some of, some of you in the in the chat, I know, yeah, Mikey's been here. And uh, who else in the chat has been here? I don't know if Tiffany's over in the chat. She's been to my house and yet, and I think Carrie's working. So she's not right. Those of you who have been to my house, please, please verify for everyone that I'm not a hoarder. <laughs> So there's that. All right. So I'm going to show you first. Oh, let me just go back to the niche conversation. The reason I said all of that is to show you what eBay itself is trying to niche as or niche as niche niche. I really don't know if there's just one proper way to say it. I say niche because I think I'm a little coarse in my language I don't know if it's like, you know, the Polak and me and the West Coast girl come together that just spits it out there like I think it, but, but, but there we go. Um, so eBay itself is repositioning itself. It's gone through some identity crisis, crises, crises. That's how you, that's the plural of crisis, right? It's crises. It's not crises. No, it's crises. Okay. <laughs> so those of us who have been in the eBay selling world for many, many years will have known that it has gone through phases and gone through major, major changes. And I don't even know how many years it's been now. It's been, oh gosh, I want to say it's been a good six seven years where they started to revamp the whole search algorithm. And uh, that was called Cassini. It was like the Cassini search project. And about, I'm trying to think where we're at. So about six years ago is when I sat down with the uh, CTO of eBay, that would be the chief technical officer of eBay. And we talked about what they were gearing search for because we were developing a software, we meaning me and my ex-husband, 
we're developing a software that integrated with eBay uh, with, with our retail end. And so we wanted to know how we could assist eBay in items coming up. Like we wanted to ha have things in our software that would work really well with eBay. So um, at that point, they talked a lot about relevance. They were at that point in a quandary of how to make these unique one-off collectibles, antiques, the glass, the pottery. How do you incorporate that into uh, a UPC skew driven world? And that's what's been happening over the last several updates with eBay is that they have found the way to do that with item specifics. That is what item specifics is all about, is having that searchable data that carries into multiple items, even on items that are unique and seemingly one of a kind. They still want that data driven information so that they can gear their search. So now in comes a new CEO. I think he's been there for like a year now and we haven't heard a whole lot from him. Like we have CEOs in the past. So um, it wasn't until recently, I really kind of got wind of what his direction for eBay was because I know a lot of us have been super upset that eBay is not performing well for us. Um, but I'm going to show you what eBay is trying to do. And then I'm going to show you in the numbers that they just released how that's working. So basically, uh, I don't know how to say his name. It's it's Jamie. I I I know. I, I don't know. I He's got one of those names I cannot say. Jamie I. Is the CEO. <laughs> Jamie, if you're watching me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I need I need the hooked on phonics version, someone. <laughs> um, but basically, he comes, he worked at eBay once upon a time. He left. He actually was a big mucky muck over at Walmart.com. And then he came back to eBay as the CEO. And I got to tell you, I was very skeptical because I'm like a Walmart guy coming to eBay. Uh oh, this could not work well for us who like the old school way of selling, um, meaning the antiques, the collectibles. And yes, we have seen we have seen some problems with that. A lot of that has to do with how you guys are writing titles and how you're trying to attract your ideal audience. Because let me share my screen and show you what eBay's up to. So this article came out, eBay pulls out its anti-Amazon weapons to catch the eye of Gen Z. So y'all know that eBay has been accused of trying to be like Amazon. And this guy is now saying, no, we want to be the, the answer to those that don't, <clears throat> don't want to shop on Amazon. And what that means, and this, you guys can go read this article. It's at thestreet.com in their technology. And then it's eBay pulls out its anti-Amazon weapons. Um, it's a good read. I'm not going to like go through the whole thing, but... Here's something interesting. So we had this little thing called a pandemic start in the year 2020. And this was a big year for eBay. Big year for eBay. Why? Because everybody was now home at their computers. So you had both. Okay, I don't want all these ads playing. Go away. Um, it was people home at their computers not only buying but reselling. So they saw a surge in resellers, but they also saw a, saw a massive surge in buying. And I'm going to show you those numbers in a second. So eBay took this time to say, hmm, we can niche ourselves. We can reinvent who we are and, and what we're doing. And so um, they have, uh, I'm not sure I agree with this, but, but we don't have to agree with it. It is what it is. 
Uh, it's the platform that wants to be the marketplace of sneakers, luxury watches, handbags, accessories, collectibles, and motor parts. Uh, a place where consumers come because they know they will be able to find something special there. So I kind of like the way this sounds because that kind of goes with what I have been teaching sellers too, is that don't be in that bottom 10 percentile of, of things that are priced cheap. You know, you can be the consumer, you can be the, what's the word I'm looking for? The boutique. You can be the higher end seller. You can price your stuff up at a level that attracts a better customer. So the fact that eBay is working to attract that better customer also works with that. So I was really excited to read that part. So let's see what else is here. Um, expanded, blah, 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 blah. See, focus on high value customers, whereas Amazon is about sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it. Now, the piece I have a little bit of a problem with is the fact that eBay does give pricing suggestions just strictly based on an average algorithm. And that can hurt us. It can hurt us because you have still too many sellers down here selling it at the bottom level pricing to give that. So if you're watching this, if you watch this video, and I know thousands of you will, if you get nothing else from this, please, please, please stop selling your stuff cheaper than somebody else. I give values at the end of every one of my, where's my mouse? Mouse, come back to me. At every one of my videos, I give a recap and those prices are me. That's me doing the research for you. I have researched that item and I am giving you not the top top and not the bottom. I'm giving you a good estimate of the mid-range value that you can sell that item for. And I get people going, well, I can't sell it for that. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. If I put that value on the screen, it's because I know you can sell it for that price. You absolutely 150% can. Now, price isn't everything. You can't just list it and put the price on it and expect it to sell. This is where it gets tricky is you have to be found by the right customer. And again, that is where positioning yourself to get that right customer is where you will grow this business like no other. And there are thousands and thousands of, of resellers out there that are doing just that. And I guarantee they are not the ones over in the Facebook group saying my sales have tanked because they're running a strategic business online and that you and we can all do that i say this because you can do it i can do it they're doing it it's there the opportunity is there if you seize it now you have to have really good pictures pictures are like oh my gosh that is like that is your goal just like i'm learning this in youtube too but if my thumbnail sucks and it doesn't attract the right person to watch my video I watch my views tumble. So pictures are like the first thing that everybody looks at. I mean, they do the search. So we're going to talk about the titles in a second too. But if your picture sucks and come on, come on guys. We all like, I still do pictures that suck. Getting good pictures is hard, but it is worth the effort to really figure out your picture situation. Because even if you don't know what something is, if you have really good pictures, it basically would sell itself. So here's what I learned from Jordan, my daughter, the millennial, who was here a couple of weeks ago. If you want to go back and watch that, I don't, I forget. Uh, Melissa's in the Melissa. What was that? Um, what was that Monday live show called where I had Jordan talking about? It was millennials something. It was millennials something. Uh, but. This is exactly what eBay is now focused on is grabbing the millennial market, which is taking over the baby boomer market. We used to do everything about the baby boomers, but guess what? That's not who's buying. I mean, yes, baby boomers are still buying, but in the sense of a retail world, 
your majority of buyers are coming from the millennials. They have the money to spend. They're, they're the ones buying the sneakers and the handbags and the fancy watches. And yes, the collectibles, but not every collectible. Like we know there are certain things that have just tanked and they're out, they're out. They're just out. Um, you know, things like collector's plates and most little tchotchke figurines and oh gosh, I mean, I could probably come up with a with hundred more examples if I sat here and thought about it. It's simply because that's not what the millennials want. So we have to figure out what the millennials want. And eBay, if you pay attention, eBay is kind of marketing that way too. Let me come back to this article because I did see over here, do, 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 where did I see it? Um, I thought this was interesting too. Let me just uh, squirrel off to this. So eBay now accounts for less than 5% of US e-commerce. They used to be more than 10% a decade ago. Uh, before that, they had even more. Uh, but so eBay is only 5% of the e-commerce world now. That means cross-posting is super vitally important because you can take that now 5% and stretch it for you personally by being in all those other markets that make up the other percentage where it applies. Again, this is like list perfectly is what I use to do that because they make it so easy and seamless. Uh, so that's that's my go-to. I'm gonna be doing, as I get my eBay listings up, I'm gonna be doing some demos of list perfectly and how that works too, because I know it's really scary to like add on something you that you haven't like seen demoed. I'm that way too. I want to see it working. But yeah, list perfectly. We'll send it out. What is it? 17 other sites now. I think it's, I think they've got 17 other sites now that they'll push it out to. And some of them are very niche sites that you probably won't use. If you're like me, I don't sell, you know, vintage clothing so much, you know, so I'm not going on like the grailed and the, that kind of thing. I'm using it to cross post to Etsy, which is a completely different customer than eBay. I'm using it to cross post to where it applies to Facebook Marketplace. I don't put a lot of stuff on Facebook Marketplace because I don't trust Facebook um, and Poshmark. And it does do Mercari, although I stopped cross posting to Mercari. But finding where you can pick up those pieces and manage the inventory is really vital and it has to do with the fact that eBay is less than 5% of the US e-commerce. That also means the sales that you had five, 10 years ago will have gone down because those people just are not on eBay like they used to be. They're shopping all over the place. Um, I loved this because I was starting to feel like this is where eBay's focus was and it's good to see this coming from Jamie, that this is not where eBay's focus is, the consumables, you know, the paper towels, dishwashing stuff, all that, like that's the consumer goods that you can go get over on Amazon. Now they specifically address the secondhand market. Uh, and this is, this is something to watch too. Every category that we've invested in, we're seeing very strong double digit growth rates ahead of the rest of the business. So when we see that eBay is focusing on a certain category of items, if that is a category you sell in, if I was you as a seller, I would also invest more time and effort into those categories because you've got eBay back there boosting you. Um, they're continuing to roll out more categories across the site. Da, 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 da. Uh, they're doing their authentication. Yeah, da, da, da. So they're very aware of their secondhand market being very um, unique to eBay. You know, they were they started that way. And it sounds like Jamie's pushing it back that way, which is really good to hear. Um they're shopping not only in their primary category, but one of the unique benefits of eBay is the multiplier effect because they shop across categories on the platform. That customer will not only go to buy a $9,000 of watches from us, 
they'll go spend $7,000 in other categories across the Bay. And what they're talking about that $9,000, $7,000 is that's like the, that's like the, um, the life value of the customer. That's not one purchase. That's over time. They track that. How much has this customer spent over the years? Okay. So really super good article. Um, I recommend it. Now, good pictures, important. You got to be found first, those titles. And what I also found in that article was Millennials don't shop the way that we used to. What? Very hard for me to wrap my head around it. But once you do, you will see a difference in your searches. So millennials are very descriptive. So you need to make sure your titles are, I really should have had something over here. Um, I have nothing over here that I can hold up and show. Sure I do. I've got a little... I got a little silver goblet. All right. I would call this by its name, which I can't read, <laughs> but I'd probably call it sterling silver liqueur cup blue enamel, whatever. But the millennial would look at that and say silver cup with blue inside. So it's really like learning to make our titles such that when they search, our items come up. And don't stuff your titles, guys. I know there is conflicting information out there about this, but I assure you, I am 150% positive the way that eBay search works is off of relevance. So think about all those words you put in the title, create a percentage. So somebody puts in three of those 16 words that you crammed into the title. That's, is that 3%? See, this is a math is not my thing. I know the basis of what I'm trying to tell you. Not sure of the actual math itself. So it's a very, very small percentage. But if you had six words in your title and they put in that three, now you've got 50% relevance. Or if they put four words that match your four out of six, you get what I'm saying? So more words can lessen your chance of being relevant to the customer who's typing into the search. You have to be very aware of that. Have to be very aware of that. Stuffing titles used to work before they made the big changes in search. Now, they really want to put in front of the customer the items they think they're most likely to click on because if they click on it, they're more likely to buy. And that's what eBay's gearing it for. So they changed the user agreement a few years ago to say that you're going to pay your listing fee, but your, your item may not show up if somebody searches for your item. That's literally in the user agreement now. So they can hide results and they do hide results. They absolutely hide results. Uh, so you want to make sure that yours comes up. Now we get into the whole promoted listing thing. That is a way to make sure that your item comes up. But just keep in mind, you're going to pay eBay a higher percentage of your profits so you're going to pay a higher fee. You're going to pay the regular fee and then you're going to pay in a fee on top of that. So you could pay upwards of 15 to 20% to sell that item on eBay. And that is going to be on the total of the transaction. That is the selling price, the shipping and the sales tax. You will pay an extra percentage on all of it. Actually, they just fixed, they just fixed the promoted listing fee. So you will not pay the promoted listed percentage on the sales tax and shipping. They just they just fixed that. But before you were paying it. So I'm more a fan of that extra percentage that you're going to pay to have eBay maybe put your item up and maybe have somebody click on it. My stance is that you build your own following 
and you drive people to your listing. So uh, let's say you're spending an extra $100 a month on fees for things that sell through promoted listings. You put $100 into your own social media boosting and sending people and marketing, maybe even pay like a virtual assistant to create some cool little marketing, do some coupons that you send out, do something with that money that sends people directly to your listings. I personally am in favor of that versus giving eBay more money. That's that's my stance on that. It's a little bit more complex to do some of that marketing stuff, but as you grow in your business, that's how you grow in your business. That's how you build the following that comes back and buys from you again and and loves what they see in your shop. And they've got you as a favorite seller so that when you list, they get an email that shows those new things that you listed. All right. Raise of hands. How many of you, because I, I follow her, how many of you have followed the crazy lamp lady and get an email every day showing the new things that she's listed? Raise hands. I'm raising my hand. I can't even tell you how many turtles I have bought from her. <laughs> and, and that's just how it works, too. She drives people to her eBay store and you get an email because she lists every single day. So you get an email that shows you and you click over, you go right to her store. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Yep. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to follow her. So that's what I want people doing with you. I want you guys to build your following and you don't have to be a YouTube person to do it. I, I just, I want that to be so clear. Before I had a YouTube channel, I was selling $30,000 a month. You know, it's possible to build that up through social media, through, here's also what I do and I recommend. So you have an eBay store, go over to uh, GoDaddy, or wherever you get a custom URL, get your store name in a URL. Mine is utterlygoodstuff.com. It forwards to my eBay store. I don't have to have a separate website. It simply is an easy way for me to tell people how to get to my eBay store, utterlygoodstuff.com. Boom. You guys can do the same thing. Go get that. Have it in your signature, in your emails. Have it on a packing slip that goes out, you know, that you put in your packages when you sell something to your customers. So many ways to get people back to just your listings. So that's what I want you to know. Okay, let me get back to the topic of today. We kind of went off on a tangent there. So I'm going to share something with you also that's been happening with eBay. So let's go back to March 2021. Every quarter, eBay puts out their numbers. So here's March 2021. You can see their revenue was up, but their net income was down, like way down. Um, and I'm not a big numbers person, but I, I look at this red and I go, ouch, ouch, eBay was hurting a little bit. So they needed to do something. But then look what happened. So something happened between March and June that completely turned around whatever they were doing. And this is about the time that Jamie took over. So my skepticism of whatever was happening with eBay kind of flipped a little switch when I saw this because uh, operating income down, that's like their, their employees and whatever it costs to run the business. So they lowered their operating income and they raised their revenue and net income. This is good stuff. This is really good stuff. But now that we get to September, Shazam, back down. Now you would expect with that huge growth that they had in second quarter that it would adjust a little bit. So I'm not super concerned about these numbers. But then here's our December where they are back up, evened out. This is a probably more accurate picture than those last two quarters where things were leveling out. So even though eBay's revenue is down, their net income is up. So whatever they're doing, you got to remember they're a business. These are the numbers that they are focused on 
And as long as these numbers make sense for them, they're not going to change course. So if the search truly isn't working, if something's happening for sellers overall, then you wouldn't see these numbers. So they're doing things that are managing these numbers. And we have to figure out how to work with that. That's that's how this all works because eBay is not going to change because we whine and complain. They're going to change if their numbers don't make sense. So that is what's happening. So pandemic happened. eBay kind of does a, like, we got to change the way things are going kind of thing. And now we've gone two years, you know, and all of the pandemic stuff has become kind of normalized. Because that's how you, human nature, once you've started living with things a certain way, you adapt. It's it's kind of a evolutionary kind of a happening where it, this is the way it is. We got to learn to work in this world and we adapt. And so now all of that leveled out for like e-commerce. Yes, there's more people shopping and there's more people who like I'm an Instacart girl now for my groceries. I never thought I would say it, but goodness gracious, I can't even imagine spending hours at the grocery store now. I I Instacart it for my groceries. I, is anybody else with me on that? Anybody else get their groceries delivered now to their door? That's a huge change because of what happened over the last two years. And... Uh, some of you love, yeah, because for me, time is everything. It's everything. Time is the most precious commodity that you can never get back once it's spent. It's gone. Wasted time. Anybody around me knows, like, wasted time is just my, oh, it hurts. Hurts. <laughs> so when I see that I saved, like, two hours of time not going to the grocery store, and I assure you, I saved money too. Even though you pay a fee and you pay a tip, I saved money because I wasn't like just putting stuff in my cart. I had to like specifically select the things to go in the cart that I needed. Um, but yeah, I never would have dreamed it. So we're adapting. All right. Now, enter into 2022. Bum, bum, bum. Um, I don't, and this is where, this is where let's, let's keep the chat non-political please please i'm asking nicely we have some certain events happening in this world that are causing people to be afraid people are changing their mode of thinking right now it's it's not about you know what do i want to add to my collection it's worrying about, are we going into a nuclear war? And, and that's just where it's at. And I'm not here to say, I'm not giving my opinion on it. I'm simply stating, <clears throat> we have some world events right now that are causing a lot of unrest in us as a people. And I know I have international people here too. Canada. Canada has had some really crazy stuff happening. Canada has had, like, we won't even go into, like, all the stuff happening in Canada. I'm sure that's taking people's focus off shopping online. So you're going to see a slowdown in sales. You're going to see a slowdown in sales right now with what's happening with Russia and Ukraine. It is just the way things happen in this crazy e-commerce world. But what I can tell you is this. Everything cycles. Everything cycles over the past 25 years that eBay has been around. We have had some major, major world events. And yet eBay keeps going. Are there times of ebb and flow? Yes. But eBay keeps going. If it's rough for you right now, it's the time to look at what you're doing in your business. Are my pictures as good as they can be? Am I listing every day? Am I listing things that people would want to be shopping for right now? Those are questions you have to ask. Yes, the market is all over the place. It truly is right now. 
Women will never stop buying cosmetics, no matter what. That is true. Here's the other thing. And I think where eBay has the right focus, you have to remember there is a large percentage of the population that has money to spend. And while they may be being more frugal, the difference between them going and buying the brand new coach purse for, I don't even know how much a coach purse, how much does a coach purse sell for? How much? I don't know. But instead of paying, let's say it's $1,000. Instead of paying $1,000 for that brand new coach purse, they'll come to a place online to spend five or $600 on that coach purse. So if you can pick up that coach purse for one or $200, even $300 and sell it for five or $600, you are still going to have a very profitable business. And, and coach purse might not be the thing that excites you. But what I'm trying to give you is there are buyers out there for those very high end items and they will come to the resale market and still spend boatloads of money, boatloads. So if you can look at whatever your niche is right now and now start thinking about who is that person that's still out there with money who's grumbling about the gas prices, but still able to afford them, that's the customer you want to attract right now. That's it. And so you have to keep that in mind. And I have not been able to follow the chat a whole bunch because I've been reading and I've been trying to like look at the camera. So I'm going to take this last 10, 15 minutes now. If you asked me a question um, that I seemingly and rudely ignored, Now's the time to ask it again. <laughs> Just put question in capitals and then ask me your question. And I will I will answer any questions that I see coming through. Some of you are actually doing those Instacart deliveries, and that's fantastic. I mean, so um, I see Marty over there does them. And anybody else can answer this for me. When I leave that tip, do you guys get that whole tip? Does that all go? to the delivery person? That's always been my question. Gotta know, gotta know. I, I, you know, I don't think so, Faith Robin. She says walking around with a high-end purse is advertising for a thief. I don't, I don't think so. I, don't, I, I think thieves are thieves are thieves and they go for easy targets, not necessarily the brand of the purse. Thank you, Cheeky Monkey. I probably should put these on the screen because my Facebook people can't see the YouTube comments and my YouTube people can't see the Facebook comments. So I will, if I'm going to respond to it, I'm going to put it on the screen. Um, I don't know what Shipty is, but the runs you ship yet. Yeah, I will get all the tips. That's good because I'm a good tipper. I'm a, if they do a good job, I'm a good tipper. I especially like getting the same person again because then they already know I'm a good tipper and they do a really good job getting my groceries. Here we go. Um, how would you suggest a word and item for sale? Native American turquoise watch I've had for 30 years. It's only got four views. Okay, I'm not. So what is your title, um, Kelly? Is it, and I'll just do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen in a second, guys. I know I'm not sharing it. Stand by. Stand by. Because I'm going to do a search first, and then we're going to see if we can find your listing. All right. Let me. So what is coming up is a lot of watch bands. And remember, best match is the, that's the default for search. So, um. Watches parts. So I'm going to go over here to watches and let's see. So we've got 29 actual watches listed. So if somebody is to narrow this down and, and go into the actual category, you should be easy to find. Um, I'm trying, I'm seeing if you answered me here. Hold on. Hold on. Stand by. 
A lot of you guys are telling me Uber drivers get the entire tip. Postmates get the entire tip. Okay, that that makes me happy. That makes me happy. Um, are you saying your title is just women's watch? No, Native American watch. Is that your whole title? That's not enough words. So you can do too few words too. There can be too few words. So let's take a look at this. So we've got an auction. We've got one here, got here. Um, and I, again, I don't know which one is yours, but here's what we do. Let's go over to solds. Now that's a really good sell through rate. If somebody's specifically looking for a watch and they narrow it down. So we've got one here, vintage Jameson Lee Navajo Sterling. So you can see they had a, enough information in here to match up. Now, did they have extra words? They did, but there's so few of these listed as, you know, if you narrow it down into the watch category, it'll come up. Also, please, you guys don't use all caps. Please don't use all caps. <laughs> Um, so these are your solds here. Now, what I want to do, I want to sort by highest because I want to see what the highest end ones sold for. So they they tend to have a name. They tend to be sterling silver along with being Native American and turquoise. All of these higher end ones that have sold. So let me see. Let me come back over here. Um, turquoise and sterling. Kelly. Kelly, what is the actual title? Just give me the title so I can type that in and find yours. Just tell me what the actual title is. And then I'm going to come in there and I'm going to find it. How can you post to the niche selling group? You just join it. You have to answer a few questions to get in. And uh, then there's some, some group rules to follow. We, we have them all spelled out for you. The best way to get help over there. And we help Lots and lots of people every single day. Okay, some of you say, hold on, I want to find this listing. So, and I see more questions. I'm just, I don't see an answer yet to what the actual title is. Anybody, anybody? I was hoping somebody else who found the listing maybe because chat's moving fast. Um, in the meantime, let me find, let me find another question here. We'll, we'll come back to that one. Um, I've been sending a coupon for 20% off to every buyer since October, about 300 and not one taker. I even asked one customer if she'd gotten my coupon and she said she had not seen anything. So that may, might be a technical issue. I haven't sent the coupons out, so I'm not exactly sure how that works. I suspect they also may be going into people's spam folders or people can turn off the emails that they get from eBay. So if they turned off promotional or that kind of thing, then they wouldn't be getting the coupons. But I would think you should be getting something. Um, and I would say also to include an actual like paper coupon in the boxes that you send out to customers with a way for them to continue to follow you, give people a call to action, have them come back over and make sure they have followed you, give them like spell it out one, two, three, how they do that and offer them an incentive in the form of once you do that, here's a 20% off coupon for anything else in my store. Kind of people like to earn something crazy as that sounds. Can you, could you explain how to create a discount code? Do you use anything for that code? It's something that eBay just introduced and, I, and because we only have like five minutes left, I will need to actually play with it myself because I haven't done that yet. But it's in your, I can show you the screen that it's on. Stand by, stand by. Let me. Um, it's in the, 
it's in the marketing tab of your seller hub. And basically I just, I'll show you what the screen looks like. So up here you have all these tabs. So it's in the marketing um, and you can launch a coupon right here. And you can also, they, they tell you step-by-step. Step. I haven't gone through this, but eBay is pretty good about showing you how to do all this stuff. So I would recommend spending a little time playing around with that. Create a coupon. Boom, diddy, boom. That's where you manage your promotions, just like you do any other. Here, a coupon. And you give it a code. That way you can have different codes for different, like the ones you send with customers can be a different code from that you send online so you can track where people are buying from. So there you go. Um, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let me see. Hold on. See, some of you seem to have found. Okay, so it's a Marty Johnson marine american turquoise watch okay stand by marty morty sorry morty i still have to figure out how to increase the size of my chat screen because it's really small let me Okay, hold on. Why isn't it coming up? Morty Johnson. Should be showing you guys this because this is how, like, I put in Morty Johnson and another word, unless you already corrected it. <laughs> but now let me do best match. And let me see where yours comes up. Morty Johnson. Did you go correct that spelling because someone said you had it spelled wrong already? Because I'm not sure you're not. Okay, maybe somebody can help me with that. <laughs> oh, I mean, because I was seeing people said that you had it spelled wrong. So let me. Okay, so now I'm, I'm confused because nothing's coming up with that exact title that you gave me, which could be why nobody's finding it. Did you call it, is this it? Is it one of these? Help me, help me, is it, help me, help me. All right, let me see. Let me come down in the comments and see. Morty Johnson, Native American turquoise watch. Is it, I'm not coming up with anything with that title, as you can see. Native American turquoise watch. Morty Johnson, that's what I put. Right, right. So, it's not coming up. I unfortunately cannot copy and paste. That was one of the downfalls of, um, but let me see if I can find that by the item number. 35393170220207. Nope, I'm not finding it. Not finding it that way, Melissa. One, three, oh my goodness. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Not right. Yeah, I did Native American. I, I'm not finding it. Are you sure it's listed? <laughs> it was the second one listed. Okay. Stand by. Okay, it is the, okay, but you didn't give me the exact title. Yeah, you're confusing me. That's what I asked for the exact title so that I could go put the exact title. Okay, so it's this one. All right. Number one, 
stop running it on auction. Stop running it on auction. Um, if it's this one, am I in the right one? We'll give you a little, little promo here. Um, auction format is not for most items. Let me know if I'm on the right one. Once somebody sees this, am I on the right one? We'll go over a little bit today because I want to make sure that we use this as an example to help all of you. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. So we've got a Morty Johnson Sterling Silver Native American Turquoise Watch. Fantastic title, except I would capitalize each letter because here's the thing. If you want a high-end customer, grammar matters. And that putting a capital letter at the, at, that's how you write a title. It's, it's just the way titles are written. And to the I, it says professional. And you want professional to go with your high-end price. Now, here's the other problem, again, is that it's an auction format. Take that off of auction format because... You don't want that high-end customer coming along and saying, oh, I don't want to wait another three days for this. I wanted it now. I'm going to go find one that's, you know, for sale somewhere else. I'm seeing something else on this watch, A-C-Q-U-A. So let me come down here and make sure you've got this in your item specifics. You do not. So these item specifics are what drives all the things that are not crammed into the title these days must be in your item specifics. And if they are in both your title and your item specifics and your description, that is telling the search engine, boom, boom, boom. This is the right relevant item to give this person. Um, so you want to fill out these item specifics really, really full. Um, let's see. Nobody's ever going to ask questions anymore. So even saying, feel free to ask questions, they don't. It's not how people buy anymore. Um, I would also break this out into sentences that are lined up one on top of another instead of a run-on paragraph. It's not a run-on. Sorry, that was the wrong word. Uh, but where you put the whole thing like just on one line and it goes naturally, make it not you don't use bullet points, but make bulleted points by giving it separate lines. Make it really, really easy to read and get the information. I suspect I suspect people want the uh, measurements on this. They're gonna want to know if it's gonna fit them, even though you put a ruler. This is, I'm just not a fan of the ruler because a lot of people can't look at that and decide um, how that works. So. I think your title is great. Let's go do a search for Morty Johnson. Let's see what his stuff is selling for. So it's going to give me 71 results. Now, look, because I was just in yours, it's showing me that one first. It's trying to put it back in front of me. Um, but so we got 71 results. So now I'm going to go to solds. Now, I don't know who this, I'm going to just subtract out this Rick part because we don't care about Rick. <laughs> so now we've got the Morty Johnsons that have sold recently. So we can check our price point. So $245 for a necklace, $259 for a belt buckle. Oh, hello there, my pretty. We have a $699 listed watch. You are selling a watch. All right. Uh, here we go, eBay. So what we are going to do, stand by. Hold on. You see where I'm going with this, guys? I like. I want you guys to understand this. I am going over to Terapeak because Terapeak will tell us how much that $6.99 watch actually sold for. So hang tight. Let me... So I'm pulling up the last 365 days of results. Morty Johnson watch. Hello. Look at our lovely, lovely average sold price. 
we do like that. And we come down here, that one sold for 450 because it was the only one that sold, but that's okay. You know what that tells me? Everybody say it with me. Hold on, I gotta get back to her item now. I'm gonna tell you right now, go redo this listing. Go end, go end that auction. You don't want that. End that, launch this as a buy it now with best offer for $699. Do it. I'm telling you, then be ready to take $400 to $450 for it. Would you be okay with that? Just want to make sure you'd be okay with that. And you would not consider that a lowball offer because you're willing to take $200 right here in this auction. And I'm telling you, you can have double that. I know it's not the exact same watch, but it's a fantastic watch and it's also a cuff somewhere in there i would add the term um cuff put that and i wouldn't put it i think you don't need to add anything to your actual title i think you need to add it into these item specifics fill this up with uh the fact that it's the style is cuff that it's sterling silver um you've got the navajo which is great but you got to add more 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 in there lots more so that that buyer who's got a ton of money to spend and wants a pretty watch is going to buy your watch because you don't have a lot of competition on that particular artist's stuff. So there you go. There you go. And that way you can now, oh, that's not the original face on the watch. I don't care that the value is not in the watch part itself. The value is in the cuff and the turquoise and the sterling silver, no matter what that watch is. Yep, that's what somebody is buying. So I would love an update. Kelly, can you commit to doing that like today and give us an update? In fact, you can even message or email me a link to your new listing and I'm gonna watch it. And we're gonna hopefully see a sold next week because it's fantastic and you've got, it may take a little longer. I'm not going to guarantee it's going to sell, but you've got a fantastic item and your buyers out there. So that's, and this is, this kind of wraps up everything I was talking about today is the reason if things are slow is not necessarily because of what's happening in the world or how many things eBay's doing or not doing. It is you. You have control over so many things in your business and bringing people to your business and improving your listings that you have to drown out all the naysayers out there saying, oh, things are just like horrible right now. Things are slow because you're feeding that negative energy into your brain. Concentrate. This is why I love to sort by highest first sold because you can see, look, that item sold in the last 90 days. In the last 90 days, that item sold for that price, you can do it too. So feed your brain that and give yourself more. Yes, right? Would you like to come over for the last minute? Step up, step up. Hi. Yeah, all right. Go ahead, poop on me. <laughs> but you guys, stay positive, stay positive. Have fun with this business. Would you like a pistachio? They think I'm asking them. Would you like this? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, there's too much negativity out there. There's too many bad things happening out there. Do we need to be aware of them? We absolutely do. Do we need to focus on them? We absolutely don't. That's right. We need to focus on having our best life, helping and serving others and living this life that we're given. And I'm all about it and I'm here to help you. So please, if you have more eBay related questions, e-commerce related questions, come join the Niche to Profit group on Facebook. Yes, yeah, yeah, Bougie agrees. And if you want another place to have some fun buying and selling stuff, come over to my Vintage with Style buy and sell group on Facebook. And I'm gonna give my 
moderators a little <laughs> chance to put those over. I really need to put them down in the description. I'm going to link them down in the description too. I keep forgetting to do that. Um, they're on all my regular videos. I just don't think I have them. I need to add it. I need to add it. They're always in my regular videos though. But yes. Yes. And those of you who are determined to make this a successful business will absolutely see success. I guarantee it. And I'm here for you. So with that, yeah, yeah, go be profitable. And, oh, I'm still going to teach you to say this. Yes. Make it fun. We'll see you all on the next one. Thanks, everyone.